Hello and welcome to Puzzles Please, I'm Maddie and in today's video I just kind of wanted to share with you my thoughts and experiences and what I've discovered about all the puzzles that I've done so far this year and there's been quite a few of them. So without further ado, let's get going. All the way back in January, my first puzzle of 2021 was a Schmidt puzzle, a Disney one. It was Snow White Discovers the Cottage and the artwork was by Thomas Kincaid. It was a thousand pieces and actually it's the first of three Schmidt puzzles I've done so far this year. The other two being Mickey and Minnie Sweetheart Cove and oh, this one here, Sleeping Beauty. Now, as you may have guessed, I really like these Schmidt Disney puzzles by from the Kincaid Studios and there's two main reasons for that. The first being the most important and that is the quality of these puzzles. The pieces fit together really well, nice and snugly. So snugly that, you know, once the puzzle's finished, you can actually lift it up. The printing is really good, stuck down well, colours nice and vibrant and well, the price is pretty good for, you know, premium quality puzzle over in Europe anyway. The second reason I really love these Schmidt Disney puzzles is for Kincaid artwork in them. They're not as bright as some of the Disney puzzles you get out there, but Kincaid uses light to create this sort of serene, idyllic effect in his artwork. And this really comes through in these Disney puzzles that give them like just a touch of magic. Well, I must point out that these Kincaid artwork puzzles are not always the easiest. They're not as easy as, say, some of the brighter Disney puzzles. But I think they're well worth the effort. Out of the three I've done this year, Snow White Discovers the Cottage was definitely the hardest. Quite a lot of dark areas in that one, but it was really enchanting. This Sleeping Beauty one, I feel, was the easiest one so far this year. Quite a lot of distinct features and colours in there and has like a really joyous feel to it. Although actually Mickey and Minnie Sweetheart Cove is actually my favourite from these three puzzles. It's just so cute and I even have a video up on the channel. It's like a review on Schmidt puzzles and the Kincaid Disney ones and in that video I'm you can follow me actually completing Minnie and Mickey Sweetheart Cove. The second puzzle I did this year was The Secret Garden from Gibson's. It was 500 pieces and it was like a nice, joyous, bright puzzle to do back in January to lift my spirits. I can't show you the box of that one today because I actually borrowed it from a friend, but it came in like a nice little sort of square, compact, strong box. Next up was my Where's Wally puzzle, which for me was like a throwback to my childhood being a kid of the 90s and the design was really fun. That puzzle, I didn't get it brand new, I bought it second hand, all the pieces were there and the design was really fun with Wally going on the ski slopes and all these crazy things happening on those ski slopes but I have to say it was a pretty difficult puzzle and one reason for that is the pieces did not fit well, they were like really loose and that area right at the top of the puzzle that is all white I must have like redone that about 10 times because the pieces they seem to fit together but then it wasn't correct so that was a bit of a nightmare with that one the next puzzle I did this year was this one from Huadada it's one of three puzzles that Huadada sent to me this one is Morning Blossom they also sent to me Lakeside Leisure Time. I have done this one too. And finally, Window Cat. All three of them I've done. They're on the channel. I did create a little review video of my thoughts on who are dad puzzles. They are, the pieces are quite thin, but they do fit together very nicely. The artwork is not what I generally go for. But, you know, they are nice, vibrant puzzles, all a thousand pieces. This one, the first one I did, actually, Morning Blossom, I think is my favourite. They have a gloss finish to them. I found all three of the puzzles 
like really easy puzzles to do like you can complete them in one sitting and you also mm. get oh that was a bit of a funny noise <laughs> a huge poster which is actually the same size as the puzzle in them i also add their puzzles are actually very reasonably very cheaply priced Okay, moving on from these quite simple, easy puzzles is two puzzles that were definitely quite a bit more challenging. Both of these puzzles are by Blue Kazoo, which are a premium puzzle company. And the quality, I cannot fault. They are very, very nice quality puzzles and you definitely want them to be good quality and fit really well together when you've got designs like this because they were definitely challenging especially this one the air uh, it's a circular puzzle but this is the one i did first so i'll talk about this one first this one is called starry wave it blends together two very famous pieces of art van gogh's starry night and hokusai's the great wave to create this very challenging but beautiful puzzle design. I personally found all those blue swirls the most challenging area of this puzzle, but it does come with a nice big puzzle poster as well, if I can get it back out. There we are. And that one, this poster, it's quite a nice size, big enough that you can see all the detail, but not so big that it's absolutely unwieldy, falling everywhere. The other blue kazoo puzzle is this one, the earth, the circular one. And yeah, quite a lot of hours went into trying to solve this one. Luckily though, the puzzles are really, really good quality, which is what you need with a challenging puzzle. So it was very hard to put a piece like in the wrong place or anything, which was just as well because, I mean, this puzzle, it's got a lot of dark areas and colors very similar. So you like really have to pay really good attention to detail on this one. But when I did finally complete this one, it was so satisfying. The earth is actually part of a series. You can also get the moon and the sun, which actually look a lot harder again. This one is Tower Bridge at Sunset, which depicts London, the capital of England, my home country. And it has like a really kind of like nostalgic feel to it. A lot of people said to me they expected this puzzle to be quite challenging, quite difficult, and it really wasn't. I was surprised at how simple it was. Inside this one, we get a nice picture and a bit of information about the artist as well. And as for the quality of this one, really good, nice big pieces. What you would expect from Ravensburger, standard blue back and the sort of anti-glare matte finish. This one was a really nice puzzle. The other Ravensburger puzzle I've done so far this year is this one. It's Myths and Legends and it's an Amy Stewart, well designed by Amy Stewart puzzle. And I think it's design wise possibly my favourite puzzle so far this year. Inside the puzzle box, which is like a standard Ravensburger rectangular box. Also get a bit of information about the artist Amy Stewart and a nice picture design of the puzzle. So it's handy that we've got two pictures of the puzzle. I just really love this puzzle design. I'm really into mythology, legends and fantasy. So this was definitely right up my street. We've got dragons, magicians, elves, fairies, princesses, castles. Yeah, it's a very magical puzzle. 
and I really like this style of puzzle, this sort of like bookcase style. There's quite a few Ravensburger ones out there like this and I find with these ones you don't really need to like sort the pieces to start off because there's so much going on, so much detail. You can just like piece it together as you go, it's really easy puzzles. Next up is Seaside Tram, artwork by Trevor Mitchell. It's an Otter House puzzle, a thousand pieces. I think I'm going in the right order of puzzles or hopefully near enough. Anyway, this one depicts a traditional British seaside, very nostalgic, pretty little image. Uh, it's the first of two Otter House puzzles I've done this year, so I've done this one. And I have also done this one, Spring is Here, which I think this one was my favourite out of the two. So vibrant and sort of like really depicts when spring is here and everything's coming to life. This one's like a portrait one as well which I tend to stick to the landscape just because they're easier to like record and time lapse for the channel but I couldn't resist this one. It's a really fun image, artwork by Annie Mortimer and Otter House and not as big a company as like Ravensburger and things but the quality is really really good. I really like them. The pieces fit nicely together and just take a little look inside. They come in these like really sturdy little uh, rectangular boxes, much smaller for you know to save space than say like you know the Ravensburger, it's about almost half the size. Anyway, okay, back to this one. And what I like is they come instead of like being in plastic, they come in like little paper bags, and you also get a nice, nice size puzzle poster as well. As for the pieces, they fit together nicely. They have just like a plain cardboard back and a slight light gloss finish. Very nice little puzzles. I also tried out a 3D hologram puzzle. It was the Realm of Enchantment. It was 500 pieces and I enjoyed doing that one. But I have to admit, I'm not sure I would do another of those hologram puzzles. I found them like quite difficult on the eyes, like trying to see um, how to put them together. I didn't really like the plastic feel to them. The pieces, they didn't fit together easily either. When we had all the pieces down it was like really bumpy but it was like it was really fun it was like something a bit different to do this one is funny dogs a thousand pieces again and it's from the puzzle brand Eura Graphics. they sent me this one and i used this puzzle to create a uh, review video on Eura Graphics. now this particular one all had the pieces were all not standard puzzle piece shapes. The pieces did fit together nicely and with the design having sort of like 12 little squares of 12 little different doggies I found it was more like doing 12 mini puzzles than like one big puzzle. Wow this is actually quite exhausting trying to remember all these different puzzles and how they were. But anyway, onto this one. It is Fairy Dell. It's actually my daughter's puzzle, but I borrowed it one evening. I just fancy doing like a nice easy puzzle. So it has larger pieces, 500 of them. And the like puzzle piece shapes are all like quite random. They're not standard puzzle pieces. And you know, we've got little fairies and magical things. It's very sweet. It's from the House of Puzzles, another British puzzle manufacturer and I can't really remember if it had a poster or anything. I'll just have a look. No, this one don't have a poster. But we have got like a nice big image on the front. These two are the two wooden puzzles that Puzzle Explorer sent to me. The first one is the lion and the next one is the tiger which I've just very recently completed. They come in these like very strong little boxes but you only get like 
very like generic on the front high quality artifact puzzle wooden artifact with just like a little sticker I don't know if you can see that of the design so when you open them up you get like a little postcard of the image well that's the only picture we get which it's probably one of the things I found most challenging on these puzzles is only having this little image but the pieces themselves are really bright and you get all these like whimsy pieces in like shapes of different animals these puzzles were definitely really fun to put together and you get like such a strong vibrant puzzle image when it's completed so the puzzle is the shape of the lion's head it's not portrait not rectangular both of these puzzles are i think just over 300 pieces each which doesn't sound very much like that'll be like a kid's puzzle like really quick but actually they they are more challenging than that especially as with wooden puzzles unlike cardboard ones you know when you're piecing them together they constantly move go out of place but all in all, these puzzles were nice and fun. With them being wooden rather than cardboard, they are quite a bit pricier if you to buy them. I am tempted to make a video of like the differences between wooden and like cardboard puzzles. Let me know if you think I should do that one. Next is one of my favourite puzzle companies. These two are from Hay. I did this one first. It's a Corsair and we've got a whole load of cheeky pirates i was expecting this puzzle to be like really challenging because you know they're all dressed mostly the same and you know lots of areas with you know um the sails look the same in different parts but actually it wasn't too bad at all i really enjoyed that and i have also completed this one this year these are both a thousand pieces and this one it was funny town by the same artist too and again really cute really funny we got bunnies everywhere and again it wasn't too challenging i find the hay puzzles like they're well cut good quality and i just love all the fun artwork these cartoon images they do i also love their funky triangular boxes not all their puzzles come in triangular boxes but like to save space as well if you've got more than one you can just like line them up like that and they become square and you can just put them on the shelf out of these two i think bunny town was actually my favorite just because it's got a bit more of the cute appeal as well as the more humorous corsair design i will definitely be purchasing some more hay puzzles to piece together well actually i already have and can't wait to do them these are riverside cottages from falcon deluxe in this box we've got two puzzles they're both 500 pieces i've actually only completed this top one so far i got these for I thought just when I want something nice and simple kind of a puzzle to do and they are very easy puzzles being 500 pieces you get a double sided poster which one side has the first puzzle and on the back has the other puzzle quality again very nice I guess I kind of know generally which puzzle companies I like and get my puzzles from them okay i promise we're almost at the end now we've got this and one more puzzle and then i'm done this one is from gallison a thousand pieces again it's like a springtime puzzle it depicts paris in like spring everything's starting to bloom and come out the artwork was by michael storings again a very nice little puzzle i do quite like the gallison puzzles the only thing I'd say with them is take care when taking them apart because they stick together very snugly so if you just like with some puzzles you can just literally roll them about and they come apart not with these like the pieces will break if you do that which I have discovered the hard way but this one it was a very nice puzzle 
Um, pieces fit well together. When it's complete, you can lift the puzzle up. With the Gallison puzzles, we do also inside get a nice little image of the puzzle and a little blurb sort of information. It's actually from the artist, not just about him. And if we just take a quick closer look at the pieces, they have a white backing, reasonably thick, nice and strong, and they have like a slight gloss sheen to them. Very nice little puzzle. Okay, on to the final puzzle I'm going to talk about today. The final one in my review is this one, Sleepy Time. It was the first puzzle I've ever done by the Vermont Christmas Company, which is one of the reasons I got it. I wanted to try them out. It was a nice puzzle, really like dreamy, cute, enjoyed it, you know, mediumly challenging. The pieces and that themselves, as I say, I hadn't tried it before. They they were reasonable. I wouldn't say the quality was amazing, but it was it was quite good. I'm quite tempted to make a review video on the Vermont Christmas Company as I do have another one of their puzzles to complete. Unfortunately, we don't get any like extra image of the puzzle. And the box is fairly thin. It's kind of like a medium size, smaller than like a Ravensburger, say, but we go back to like the Gallison one, whatever, it's a bit bigger than that one. But you know, this was a fun, nice little puzzle. I enjoyed it. That was the last puzzle for today, as promised. Thank you very much for listening to me for all this time. I do hope you have enjoyed this video. If you do have, then please do hit that like button and subscribe. And until next time, take care and happy puzzling.